Hey everybody, uh, here we go with uh, the area uh, module. So this is one of my favorite uh, things to teach is area and the geometry. I taught geometry for years. So anyway, so let's get started here, you guys. So here's our area, um, our, our common core strand for our, our awesome teachers. And then our question is, how are we going to find the areas of parallelograms, rhombuses, and trapezoids? All right, we'll talk about that. Okay, so the area of this is all based on the area of um, uh, rectangles. Do you remember last year the area of a rectangle is base times height or length times width? Okay, so we're going to convert all of these figures into rectangles and see how they relate to a uh, rectangle formula, which is base times height or length times width. So here, let's draw a large parallelogram on some grid paper and cut out the parallelogram. Now, um, if you don't have grid paper, and, and remember it says draw a large parallelogram, okay? If you don't have grid paper, just draw it on some regular paper, large parallelogram, and use a straight edge, okay? So any kind of straight edge, something like that, okay? Make sure it's nice and big so you can see what's going on right there, okay? So what we're going to do now is, um, uh, is we're going to cut it. We're going to cut it right here where that dotted line is, okay? So straight down, straight down from this corner, use your straight edge you guys the edge of a ruler or a student body card and draw a straight line so you can cut a nice straight uh, this off this little right triangle off on the left don't throw it away because then we're going to move that right triangle over here okay so that's what this is asking us to do so can you see it's going to make us a rectangle right there okay so let's just go ahead and answer these so what figure did we form we formed a rectangle. Does the area of the parallelogram have the same, uh, the area of this rectangle? So does this rectangle have the same area? Yeah, all we did is moved it over, so it's going to be the same area right there, okay? So um, uh, definitely yes. So the base of the parallelogram equals the length of the rectangle, okay? So um, uh, can you guys see the base of this parallelogram, which they call it B right here. Now no, oh, notice we did, we just moved this little piece over here on this side, so it's going to equal the same as the length of this uh, rectangle right here. Okay, and then the height of the parallelogram right here, which is H, is, is over here. We just moved it over here, so it's going to equal the width of, of the rectangle right there. And the area of the parallelogram equals the area of the rectangle. So what's the, form, the, the formula for area of this figure? Well, if it was a rectangle, it would be length times width or base times height. And if, it's a, if they give you the base and height, then it's going to be BH. So that's our formula for uh, parallelogram. So what's the formula for the area of the parallelogram? Uh, base times height. So if they give you the base and the height, we just multiply them just like the rectangle. Okay, so base times height. Here over here, this rectangle is going to be the length times the width right here. All right, we just wanted to show you that um, uh, that the, a parallelogram can be converted into a rectangle. We can use the same formula, okay? So the area of a parallelogram is the product of its base and its height. Product is a fancy name for multiply. All right, and anything with area, we end our area answers in square units. So if it has inches, we say inches squared. Meters would be meters squared, centimeters squared, whatever the units are, always end it. If it says find the area, end it with um, uh, units squared. So can we use the formula area equals BH with, uh, to find the area of a rectangle? Well, yeah, it's the same thing, you guys. So a rectangle is a parallelogram that has four right angles. So its length and width can be used for the values of B and H in the formula. So base times height, length times width. They're both the same right there. Let's find the area of this parallelogram right here, okay? So we're going to go base times height. So it's going to be 14 times 7 right here. All right, and I'm going to re-show you guys a good multiplication trick, okay? Don't give up on yourself. Please don't give up on yourself. I'm going to show you a nice trick how to multiply 14 times 7. 14 is the same as 10 plus 4, so I'm going to change that 14 to 10 plus 4. And then I'm going to use that distributive property and do 7 times 10, 7 times 4, and add them together. So 7 times 10 is 70, 7 times 4 is 28, so 70 plus 28 is 98. Now remember, we end our answer in square units, so this is going to be cent uh, centimeters squared, so 98 centimeters squared would be, be the answer to that. All right, so here's a trapezoid, you guys. Remember, a trapezoid has only two parallel sides. The other sides are not parallel. The parallel sides are called the bases, okay? 
These are called the legs. We don't need to worry about that in this lesson right here, but the non-parallel sides are called the legs. Anyways, so we'll call them base 1 and base 2 right here, okay? B sub 1, B sub 2. And then here's the height right there. Now what I'm going to do is copy this trapezoid. I'm going to flip it upside down and slide it right here, over here, okay? So right here. So if we put that same trapezoid flipped, it gives us a very large parallelogram. Can you see the parallelograms? Can you see this side over here is parallel to this side and the top and bottom are parallel okay what's this length right here this length is this length because we flipped it upside down so this would be base one down here similarly this would be base two up here okay so the base of the entire parallel sorry parallelogram is the sum of these two bases right here so base two plus base one or base one plus base two that's the area, the, the base of the whole parallelogram. Okay, so we know the area of a parallelogram is the product of its base, which is B1 plus B2 times the height right there. Okay, so that's what that says right there. So the base times height or B1 plus B2 times the height. Now, if we wanted to find just one of the trapezoids, okay, so two of the, this is two trapezoids. So if this is the area for the whole parallelogram right here, then for one of these trapezoids, we're going to take half of it right here. Okay, so that's how we're developing our formula for a trapezoid, you guys. So it's just half the sum of the two bases. So if we add the two bases together times the height and take half of it, because it's only half of the whole parallelogram right there. Okay, so that leads us into this formula. So the area equals, if we know it's a trapezoid, it's one half the height times the sum of the two bases right there, okay? All right, so now it doesn't matter which one you call base one and base two because B1 plus B2 is gonna be the same as B2 plus B1. For example, two plus five is seven. Five plus two is also seven. So it doesn't matter which ones are you call B1 or B2. That's what that says. Okay, here's an example. So a section of a deck uh, is in the shape of a trapezoid. What's the area? Okay, so remember we're gonna do one half uh, base one plus base two times the height, okay? Or the one half the height times B1 plus B2. Okay, let's plug everything in right there. So there we go. Let's go ahead and add 17 and 39. That's gonna give us 56. Okay, now when we take half, we can take half of this guy or this guy right there. It doesn't matter. It's easier for me to take half of 16, okay? So half of 16 is eight. All right, now we can do 8 times 56 right here. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to show you that math trick again, you guys. That It's so slick for me. I don't need a calculator for this. I'm going to break 56 up into 50 plus 6 right there, okay? And then now we're going to go 8 times 50. Well, 8 times 5 is 40. So 8 times 50 is 40 with a 0 or 400 right there, okay? And then we'll do 8, eight, eight times 6. 8 times 6 is... 48, so we're left with 40 plus or 400 plus 48 or 448 square feet or feet squared. Okay, all right, I love that trick, you guys. I show that in my high school class over and over and over again. All right, so here's a rhombus, you guys. A rhombus is a quad that has all sides congruent, and so how do we show that they're congruent with these little tick marks right here? Okay, so when you're in my high school class, I clap my hands and I say, As soon as you know things and they're congruent, I say this, I go. Mark the figure, so um, uh, they get used to it after about the first day. That you know, I just I, I just clap my hands three times, and they they all say mark the figure. So whenever you have congruent things, mark the figure, and it's training your brain to see that those sides are congruent. If you don't mark it. It gets really vague, so just mark the figure. So mark the figure, okay? Sorry about that if that's waking some people up. All right, and then notice the diagonals of this uh, rhombus right here, you guys. Okay, so so this red diagonal is, we'll call it D1, and, um, and this green diagonal is going to be D2, and do you see it's making four little triangles in there? Now they're right triangles, so don't worry. I'll show you they're right triangles later, but not in this lesson right here. So I'm going to divide these two guys up into blue triangles and these two guys up into green triangles right there. All right. Now if you're colorblind like my son is, uh, it would be hard to distinguish uh, those colors right there. They would all look gray or sometimes brown or sometimes green. Um, my son has a hard time distinguishing colors, so I apologize about that. 
All right, so what we're going to do is reshuffle all these four triangles right here into a rectangle. So right here, we're going to do that right there, okay? Notice this length right here is these two triangles right here. So this B for the base of the rectangle right here is diagonal 1, okay? This height right here for the rectangles, remember the area of the rectangle is base times height, okay? This height of this rectangle right here is only this piece right here. So it's half of diagonal two right there. Okay, so the area of a rectangle is base times height. Okay, so the base of one of the rectangles is one of the diagonals and then the height of the, of the rectangle is, is half of the length of the other diagonal. Okay, so we're gonna go, so the area of a, of a rectangle is, is base times height. So we'll substitute in D1, and since the height is 1 half D2, we'll plug that in. This will be D1 times 1 half D2, okay? And that's going to lead us right into uh, our formula for um, uh, a rhombus, you guys, is this. If we know the lengths of the diagonals, we multiply them, take half, okay? So it's half the product of the diagonal. So product means multiply, so we multiply the diagonals and then take half, all right? All right, so here we go. So I think this is pronounced uh, Cedric. Cedric is constructing a kite in the shape of a rhombus, and I've never heard of spars. So the spars, you guys, is this. So this is a spar, and this is a spar. So these spars are, this is 15, and this is 24. So that's just a fancy name to say diagonals, okay? So how, uh, how much fabric will Cedric need for the kite right there? Well, fabric would be, fab, fabric would be area. So we're going to find the area of this, and that's how much fabric we're going to need, okay? All right, so um, uh, area of a rhombus is, we just discovered that, one-half diagonal one times diagonal two. So let's go ahead and plug those numbers in. Now, when we take half of a number, you can take half of either this number or this number. I like taking half of even numbers. So I'm going to take half of 24. Half of 24 is 12. So we have 15 times 12. Let's use that trick again, okay? I'm going to change 15 into 10 plus 5. I could change 12 into 10 plus 2. It doesn't matter, but it, um, I like 10 because 10 is easy to multiply. Okay, so I'm going to change it, uh, 15 into 10 plus 5. Again, we could have changed 12 into 10 plus 2, but it doesn't matter. So 12 times 10 is 12 with a 0, so 120. 12 times 5 is uh, 60, so we get 120 plus 60 when we do that, and we get 180 square inches of, of fabric. Remember, you guys, we always end it with square units, okay? Don't just write 180. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, you can say 180 cars, 180 pounds, 100 whatever. So, so answer in the context of the question. So this is an area question. So it's uh, square inches in this case right here. Okay. All right. Let's um, uh, let's find the area of these rhombuses that have these these diagonals right here. Okay. So our area formula is one half uh, the diagonals, the product of the diagonals. Let's go ahead and do that with all of them. All right. And I'm going to use that trick on all of them. Okay. First of all, let's take Let's take a half of, not this number, because that's odd. We get a decimal, which is fine. I'm going to take half of this 12, which is 6. So we have, that's going to become 35 times 6. And again, I'll change 35 into 30 plus 5. And then 6 times 30 is 180. And then um, uh, 6 times 5 is 30. So when we add those together, we get 210. Again, square units, so meters squared. Okay, all right. Okay, this one, 2 goes into 14 seven times so we'll do that first okay and then 9.5 is the same as 9 plus 0.5 okay so there's that right there and then we'll distribute this through so seven times nine is 63 seven times 0.5 is like taking seven and dividing it by two or taking a half of seven which is 3.5 so we get 63 plus 3.5 which gives us 66.5 square inches okay all right, all right, so here we can take half of 10 or 8. Since 10 is a good number to multiply, we just tag a zero with it. I'm going to take half, I'm going to leave 10 alone and take half of 18. Did I say 8? I think I said 8. 18. So half of 18 is 9, so it becomes 10 times 9, okay, which is 90, 90 meters squared. All right, so here, um, because we have a mixed number, 8 and a fourth, I'm going to take half of 40 and change that to 20. 
Okay, and then I'm going to change 8 and a fourth to 8 plus a fourth. Okay, and then distribute the 20 through. 20 times 8. Well, 2 times 8 is 16. So 20 times 8 is 16 with a 0, or 160. And then 20 times a fourth is the same as a fourth of 20, or 20 divided by 4, which is 5. So I get 160 plus 5, and that's going to get me 165 feet squared. All right, you guys. Hey, don't give up on yourself with, uh, with doing math, you guys. I think math is way cool. So just hang in there. It gets easier. Just, just don't give up. Take care, you guys.